As long as a person has their will to live, they will live no matter what's going on with their body. But once you lose your will to live, well, then that's when people, you know, expire. And so when they make these pronouncements, like, well, you're only going to live for such and such, how dare they? Absolutely. Doctors, a lot of them are suggesting people to death. Exactly. Exactly. So if somebody said that to me or anybody I know, I would immediately, uh, that would be the end of my relationship with them. Well, didn't it have to be for you since you were pronounced terminal? Well, yeah, but it, it was all, but it was at the end when, and also they told me they didn't know what I had and they said, I mean, I was really young. I was really young. So, How young is young? <laughs> and, uh, I was just like everybody else. Well, the doctors are God. They know what's going on. And so they kept telling me, well, we don't know what you have, but we want you to go to this clinic. And so I, the clinic was in New York, uh, not New York City. It was upstate. And so they were saying, well, you know, we can't do anything. If anything, this is the only place that can help you. That's what they said to me. We don't understand. We don't know what's going on, nothing. So I go there for six months. Now, every month I was getting a symptom that I didn't have the previous month before. And the doctor would just say, he would pat me on the arm and say, well, let's wait a little longer and see what happens. Were you getting chemo at the time? Well, I, they, yeah, they were giving me that, but I didn't know what I was taking. I mean, and I was too ignorant at that point to uh, understand that I needed to understand what I was taking. And uh, let me say to every listener listening, always find out what you're taking and if you're taking something, what the effects are. And let me share this. There's no such thing as a side effect. There are effects. Thank you for that critical distinction. Thank well, you that's so much. For people to know because they want to make side like, oh, well, you know, this is a side. No, 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 no. These are the effects of, of the drug, whatever it is. There's no such thing as a side effect. Well, the purpose to say a side effect is to trivialize the harm that's being done by the treatment protocol. Or the drug. Well, that's one of the reasons why they stopped teaching the doctors about the lymphatic system. Drugs cause blockages in the lymphatic system. And the O says to do no harm. And so uh, in, before the mid-50s, the doctors would never give you drugs. It had to be the last resort. And everything was also uh, herb-based. So after that, things change, especially when the uh, pharmaceutical companies bought major interest in the medical schools and they turned turned everything to chemical medicine. Can you talk about Dr. Samuel West and Dr. Warburg, just contextual background? I think you would talk about it beautifully. Okay, absolutely. First of all, uh, I knew Dr. West very well. He was a brilliant man and a very passionate man. And he was the only person in the whole United States to set up a school to teach people about the lymphatic system. Because he understood the lymphatic system being electromagnetic, but but his way of explaining it was more from a religious point of view. So a lot of people didn't appreciate that part of it, but at least they were able to get how important and how effective uh, or how uh, effective uh, using certain energy techniques were with the lymph system. Like he used a trampoline and then he had different ways of stroking the body with the hand because we have enough energy coming out of our fingers to move our lymph systems in certain ways. Kind of like lymphatic massaging? Yeah, kind of like that. Okay. And, um, on the uh, uh, on the trampoline, because when you get on the trampoline, first of all, you're you're going to get forty times more oxygen moving through your system. That's major. 
40 times more oxygen moving through your system than it is normally moving through your system. That's profound. Oxygen is what heals us. That's the healer. So the more oxygen you have in your system, the less you're going to have any kind of issues or diseases or anything like that. Uh, Dr. West knew this, and so he was teaching, and he devised his uh, trampoline and and, um, uh, his method of doing that. And um, he was the first person to talk about Dr. Warburg. Dr. Otto Warburg won the Nobel Prize in 1931 for discovering the cause of cancer. 1931, the cause of cancer was discovered. It is a lack of oxygen at the cellular level. It's called hypoxia. So hypoxia means you literally have uh, hardly, and you don't have enough oxygen in your system to keep your cells healthy. It's you're really it's called uh, an anaerobic situation. Anaerobic means not enough oxygen. Aerobic means there's enough oxygen. And people hear those terms. So if they, now they know what that is. I want to share something interesting and pivotal to what you're saying with you very quickly. I have a dear friend of mine who developed a tumor behind her nose. And Mm -hmm. for a year, they couldn't tell her whether it was cancerous or not. So they put her on chemotherapy and heavy doses of radiation all at the same time. She Mm. was violently ill. She almost died from the treatments, couldn't function. I got her set up to do hyperbaric oxygen treatments. Mm -hmm. And she went in and felt incredible for those five out of the 30 treatments I set her up for. Oh, my goodness. Turns out she goes back to her oncologist at USC, and he plants a seed in her Mm -hmm. ear and says, you know, some cancers really love oxygen, which will make them grow. We just don't know what you have. And what do you think she did? She She stopped stopped all her hyperbaric oxygen treatments. She stopped out of fear. That was two months ago. I cannot tell you how upset I was. Well, where is she? Is she still here? Yeah, she's in Glendale, California. Okay, well, uh, all I can say to anyone is if you are doing any therapy that is not considered uh, uh, a Western-type therapy, because believe me, there are many therapies that cure cancer, like Ayurvedic is another one, Um, and you are having results, Keep your results. Do not listen to people who are telling you that your results are not happening for you. You How dare somebody tell you that? What they're doing is they're actually taking your life from you. It's like how can you believe someone outside of you when your results are something else? The fact that he told her that there are some kind of cancers that love that, that, you know, love oxygen. And, and therefore it, will grow. <laughs> that is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. She said to me, you know, I've actually heard that there are some cancers that grow with oxygen. I had to pull away because this is an indoctrination. It's a religious indoctrination system. The standard of care and the unwillingness to be receptive to things that have worked for people for a long time. It's profound. It's profound. Do you know that Steve Jobs had millions of dollars worth of treatments? Millions of dollars. And the author of his new book, in an interview I saw last week, was suggesting that because he didn't go in for standard care when they first saw pancreatic cancer, and he waited nine months and, quote, played around with herbs, that's why he died. Oh, my God. If he had pancreatic cancer and he had not been doing what he had been doing, he would have been gone before that. Even though there are, uh, well, there it, it, it's just really sad. Profound messaging to the public. It's profound. You, If a person is not willing 
to take responsibility for their own health at this point and do the research.